Welcome back to Wilson Fun Tech, and welcome to the University of Illinois. I feel the electricity. This is the electric revolution. I feel the electricity. Today we're going to be building a DIY electric bike with the goal of defeating the mighty Siron Light B and the Talaria Sting R. Well, at least in the speed department, I'll have to find some local Talaria boys and Sironsters to see if we can race. This 3000 watt, 72 volt beast is fast. But first, let's see if it can beat my DJI Mini 3 Pro drone. This drone in sport mode has a top speed of 35 miles per hour. How fast can you go? It's electric, baby. Is it 72 volts? Welcome to Wilson Fun Tech. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The AI algorithms will reward you. Trust me, I should know. <laughs> ha, ha. So I'll be honest, this e-bike build was not cheap. This is the battery pack that I chose the $750. It's 72 volts and 20 amp hours. It's also shaped like a triangle, so that helps it fit inside a bicycle frame. And the motor kit was about $600, so totally I spent about $1,468 just for the battery pack and the motor kit. Next, I had to decide which bicycle frame to use. I decided to go with the Dick Sporting Goods Nishiki Tamarack for around $350. So that brings my total cost to around $1,800 for the entire build. Now let's go on LunaCycle and look at some of the top high performance e-bikes. They have a Talaria Triple X for $3,250, Talaria Sting R for $4,500, and a Suron X for $4,500. Honestly, these deals are hard to beat. You get a lot of bike for your money. Now let's take a quick look at the top three contenders. The Talaria Triple X, Talaria Sting R, and the Saran X versus my homemade DIY electric bike. I'm going to call it the Sleeper 72 because it looks like an innocent little mountain bike. You can see my bike came in at around $1,800 total cost. It's a 72 volt system with a 20 amp hour battery and the top speed is around 62 miles per hour. The range is around 32 miles and the weight is 80 pounds. All three competitors use 60 volt batteries. They have a higher capacity, a longer range, and their weight is around 50% more. But the ultimate question is who will win in a race? Who is Saron? I would like to meet him someday. Uh, he's nobody. I mean, he only has 60 volts. So he's pretty weak, and he's kind of slow, too. Do you realize the moment you live in? You are witnessing the electric revolution and the explosion of AI technology. Electricity. The awesome thing about this bike is I can actually keep up with traffic when I'm driving through the city. And not just keep up, I can pass cars, I can race, and usually I win because my bike is quicker than most cars. With an acceleration of 0 to 30 in around 2 or 3 seconds, the only cars that can beat me are Teslas, very fast sports cars, and sport bikes. It is insane what this thing can do. I've been drag racing all kinds of cars at the stoplights, including Mustangs, Camaros, Challengers, and lots of other cars, and most of them I've beaten. Revolution. By the way, I also raced a local kid on a Talaria Sting R, and it was not even close. I won by a mile. Talara who? The first step of putting this together is to take the very powerful, very heavy wheel hub motor and attach it to the bike frame. Torque arms are also highly recommended to keep your motor from spinning out your dropouts. This is what the hub motor looks like out of the package. Mine did not come with the tube and tire, so I had to buy my own. I used a 2.5 inch wide tire. The battery pack turned out really well. It fits perfectly right inside the bicycle frame. I just used the Velcro straps and some zip ties to secure it. This is what the battery pack looks like out of the package. I like to wrap it in some foam padding and duct tape to make sure it's extra protected when I'm bouncing around on the roads. I installed torque arms on both sides. On this side I even put two of them to be extra safe. I also have some awesome LED lights for the extra bling bling at night. 
I haven't really figured out a good way to secure the wires in the controller, so for now I just zip tied them to the frame. And in the future, maybe I'll 3D print something to hold it more securely. These are all the connectors and electronics that come with the kit. You basically just follow the instructions and plug all the wires together and it should work fine. And of course, I had to add a massive Bluetooth speaker on the front to blast the bass when I'm cruising down the streets. There's a full color display that's included that's pretty nice. It's got five speed modes, but I usually just run it in number five. The only problem with this display is it only shows kilometers per hour and not miles per hour. Talara who? Give me 72. Talara who? Give me 72. Are you a worthy contender?